Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the 45th verse, reading from Eugene Peterson's translation entitled The Message. The word of the Lord is as follows. He being Jesus went on to open their understanding of the word of God showing them how to read their Bibles this way. He said, you can see now how it is written that the Messiah suffers, rises from the, day on the, th rises from the dead on the third day, and then a total life change through the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in his name to all nations, starting from here, from Jerusalem. You're the first to hear and see it. You're the witnesses. What comes next is very important. I am sending what my father promised to you. So stay here in the city until he arrives, until you're equipped with power from on high. Thus far, the word of the Lord. What comes next is very important. I am sending what my father promised to you. So stay here in the city until he arrives. Stay here in the city until he arrives. I want to preach today from the subject, staying in place. Staying in place. It is hard to believe that we are in week eight of staying in place. The month of April seemed to have been a blur. I mean, it, boom, April Fools was here, and now we are already in the month of May. When this began, many of us uh, thought or hoped that it would be for a much shorter time. We looked for things to be back normal, at least by Easter, certainly by the time for spring break. And now here we are in the month of May, which was supposed to be filled with proms and graduations. Yet much to our chagrin and dismay, we are still staying in place. Many of us did not know uh, how long we'd actually be able to do it. There are those of us who, uh, who are ADD, and staying in place certainly is a change to the rhythm of our lives. We felt and some still feel some kind of way about living under severe restrictions. And while we seem to be inching towards a modicum of flexibility, it is still more restricted than we would like. Newscasts now seem to be filled more and more with protests in Michigan and even in Mecklenburg County by people who no longer desire to stay in place. And, 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 and while we can be academic about it, we must admit that living under this has been more severe for others. On the whole, small business owners, our entrepreneurs are suffering much more than those who work for medium and large companies. It is much more difficult for those who find themselves among the jobless and furloughed ranks than it is for those who are yet working at home. There's a stark difference in the experience of someone whose loved ones are healthy and the person whose loved ones are critically ill. For the person who lives alone, there can be the sense of isolation. And for the person with a house full, there can be the sense of claustrophobia. Not all experiences of stay in place are the same. And suffice it to say that most, if not all of us, may have a reason for not wanting, not liking, not feeling this staying or this sheltering in place. You know, as you, as you, as you think about it and as you read parallel the, 
the post-resurrection experiences of the disciples, uh, you become more sensitized to where the disciples of Jesus actually were during the time immediately after his resurrection because they too were staying in place. They too were under a stay in place order. With the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus spends his final days on earth showing himself to be alive by what Luke says in the book of Acts, many infallible proofs. And then in Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, Luke elaborates on what he wrote in Luke 24 with these words. Luke writes, after his death, Jesus presented himself alive to them in many different settings over a period of 40 days. In face-to-face -face meetings, he talked to them about things concerning the kingdom of God. And as they met and ate meals together, he told them that they were on no account to leave Jerusalem, but must wait for what the Father promised. The promise you heard from me, John baptized in water, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and soon. Jesus says, on no account are they to leave Jerusalem. And he, and he puts them under this stay-in-place order because Jesus understands their desire to leave Jerusalem. It is the last place that they want to be for a variety of reasons. First of all, the first reason why they don't want to be in Jerusalem, why they want to leave Jerusalem, is Jerusalem is not their home. They are neither from the city of Jerusalem nor are they from the province of Judea. These people, these, these 11 are Galileans. They are from the province, they are from the state of Galilee. And they are from cities such as Capernaum, Bethsaida, Nazareth, and Cana. And having heard the call to follow Jesus, they, they left those places and went wherever Jesus traveled. Now, usually, whenever they would go with Jesus to Jerusalem to observe one of the feast days, after they observed the feast days, they would return back to Galilee. They would return back to their homes, Capernaum and Bethsaida and Nazareth. With Jerusalem being the last place where they were with Jesus, it stands to reason in their minds that they should expect to be able to return to their hometowns in Galilee. And yet Jesus says, on no account are they to leave Jerusalem. They would want to leave Jerusalem not just because Jerusalem was not where they were from, but but, but another reason why they would not be feeling staying in Jerusalem is that Jerusalem was a place of negative experiences for them. Jerusalem was a place of bad memories. It's the headquarters of Jesus' enemies, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and scribes. It is the place of anti-Jesus sentiment. It is the place where Jesus was mistried and wrongfully executed. It was the place of Judas's suicide. It was the place of Peter's denial. It was the place where every one of them had left Jesus after saying that they would be his road dogs. With so much mental and emotional pain and baggage, who wants to stay in Jerusalem? Why not go somewhere else? Why not a change of scenery? Why not start off somewhere fresh where nobody knows them and they don't know anybody? Wouldn't life be easier? Wouldn't life be fuller? Wouldn't life be better someplace other than the place of bad memories and failures? And while that is so, Jesus tells them that on no account are they to leave Jerusalem. They must stay there and wait for the promise of the Father. On no account, for no reason, under no circumstances, were they to leave Jerusalem. He orders them 
to stay in place. You know, perhaps what adds insult to injury for some today is that you were under a stay in place order before COVID-19. And it wasn't a federal, it wasn't a state, it wasn't a municipal mandate or order. It wasn't due to a virus, it wasn't due to a public health crisis. Yours was and still is of a different nature, which makes this sheltering in place even more difficult. Because for you, like the disciples, you've been under a divine stay in place order. In some aspect of your life, your movement has been restricted by God. You aren't where you are because you want to be there. You aren't where you are because you don't have options. You are where you are because the Lord has you staying in place. May 20th will be the 30th anniversary of University Park Baptist Church having their church meeting concerning who they would call to be its pastor. And with its vote and call that night, neither they nor I imagine my being here this long. They looking at a 26-year-old single person, perhaps did not see me being here this long, and me at 26, I certainly did not see myself being here that long. But I, and as I approach this 30th anniversary, I got, I've, got to, I've got to confess to you that I'm approaching this 30th anniversary not because I've always wanted to be here and not because there weren't opportunities for me to do something somewhere else. But in those times, in those seasons, in those moments, the Lord had me under a stay-in-place order. I, I, I wanted to go and do something else, be somewhere else, but, but the Lord said, no, you've got to stay in place. And right now, right now, I'm talking to somebody whose issue, your issue is not with Mecklenburg County. Your issue is not with Governor Roy Cooper. Your issue is not with the, the, uh, the CDC. Your issue is with God because God has you under a stay in place order. And, and, and I hear you, I hear you. What's going on when God says to you, stay in place? When, 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 when God knows where you don't want to be, what you don't want to be doing. And God has you stay in place. Well, 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 first of all, first of all, God is reinforcing that your primary call is to his person. Your primary call is to, is to his person. You aren't called to a place first. You are called to a person first. Jesus' call to the disciples was First and foremost, a call to be with him. He called them to himself. He called them to follow and to accompany him. They went where he went and where he sent them. Now, as he is about to return to the Father, he is telling them to stay in place in Jerusalem. And as he is doing it, he is reinforcing that their primary call is to him. You see, friends, God calls us to himself. God calls us to be with him, to get to know him, to be shaped and developed by him, to, to follow him, to obey him. It is first and foremost a call for us to come unto the Lord. Uh, uh, whenever, whenever you are drafted or whenever you volunteer for the armed services, you enter basic training and your first call is to whatever branch of service that is and where they hold basic training for the army it's all about becoming a soldier at either Fort Benning Fort Jackson Fort Seal or Fort Leonard Ward for the Navy it's all about becoming a naval officer at the recruit training command in Great Lakes north of Chicago for the Marines, it's all about becoming a Marine at Paris Island, South Carolina, 
or the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego. For the Air Force is all about becoming an air person at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. For the Coast Guard, it's all about becoming a guardian at Cape May, New Jersey. In other words, when you sign up, when you are drafted, you are first called into that entity, and it is not about where you want to be. It is about where they are desiring to shape you and make you into the person that they desire for you to be. And friends, God issuing a stay-in-place order reminds you and me that we are called first and foremost to the person of God. And God having called us to himself, then he has the right to assign us anywhere he desires. And that, that, that allows us to flow into this next thing that is equally important. That is, God assigns us to place or places based upon his purposes and not our preferences. Uh, as Jesus is getting ready to depart, he does not have a general session and ask them, you know, you know, guys, now that I'm getting ready to go back to heaven, where would you like to be? Uh, out of all of the places that, that we've been, which which place did you, did you like the most? And, and where could you see your next ministry assignment being? No, he simply tells them under no account are you to leave Jerusalem. No, you are to stay here and wait for the promise of the Father which they would receive. He tells them to stay there because he knows that their preference is somewhere else. And his order is not about their preference. It's about his purpose. There was a purpose that was tied to the place where he assigns them. The sending of the Holy Spirit was tied to the observance of the Feast of Pentecost, the, the festival of the harvest, which commemorated God's giving the law at Mount Sinai, as well as being the time when the people brought their offering of new grain to the Lord. Look at this now, the day of celebrating the giving of the law and the gathering of the harvest would be the time when God would bring a people from every nation to Jerusalem. And God wanted to draw people from every nation to Jerusalem because God was going to do something in the upper room where God was going to send those people. And he was going to send these people from every nation gathering in Jerusalem to come to the upper room where the disciples were because it was going to be there that they would be able to hear the wonderful works of God in their own language. All this was tied to the disciples staying in place in Jerusalem. Friends, God assigns us to place or places based upon his purposes and not our preferences. And while I would admit to you, it would be nice if God would check in with us and ask us where we'd like to go, where we'd like to be, how long we'd like to be there, and when and where we get to go next. It doesn't work that way because God's purposes were established before we were ever born. God's plans were made before we ever had one day on planet Earth. You see, God is not making this thing up as we go. God, God, this is not your life is not a TV show where the screenwriters are writing next season now. No, no, no. Your life was determined in eternity with God before there ever was time. And what God has determined in eternity, God is now allowing to play out 
in time and because God wrote your script in eternity before he brought you into time God is directing you and me based upon what his purposes and what his plans are which means there are no times when God puts us on hold when God calls us to stay in place my God based upon what his purposes and plans are God says I will have you move and I will have you stay because my God my purposes and plans my God necessitate you moving or my plan necessitates you staying in place there are things my friends that God has seen moves that God has mandated designs that God has drawn appointments that God has assigned experiences that God has intended connections that God has concocted and God says for every one of them I have a place for them and sometimes that place is not where you would prefer and as it was the case with the disciples where they had to be and stay in place before they'd ever see a glimpse of what God had in mind so it is often with you and me you and I have to be and stay in place before we ever get to see a glimpse of what God has in mind my 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 I bear witness that there are many things that I never would have seen or done had I not stayed in place there are connections that I would not have if I had not stayed in place there are places I would not have gone had I not stayed in place there are things that I never would have accomplished had I not stayed in place and friends the worst thing in the world is for God to do something that was intended to include you and you miss it because you were not in the place that God told you I don't know about you but I want to experience everything that God has purposed in the place that God has purposed it I want every connection I want every resource I want every experience I want every revelation I want every anointing I want every ability I want every opportunity that God has tied to where God has me can I help somebody can I help you right quick since God hasn't changed where you are you should decide I'm gonna get everything that God has for me right where I am since, since, since God hasn't moved you and since God hasn't let you move you ought to make up in your mind I'm gonna get everything that God wants for me to have out of where he has me because the worst thing is to be so upset with where you are that you miss out on what God has for you where you are can I let you in on a secret the only one who's happy about you being upset with where you are is the enemy of your soul because the enemy knows as long as you are pouting as long as you are grumbling about where you are you aren't looking for what God has in mind for you right where you are you may literally miss out on what you really want or need because you can't see it happening where you are and yet where you are is the exact place that God says I've got you because where you are is the exact place where God says I want to do something in you and with you where you are is where God is desiring to fulfill the purpose that he has for your life right now where you are is where God has designed to keep his word where you are is where God has chosen to reveal his glory and I'm coming I'm coming against a demon right now and I am praying for somebody to shake yourself free from your pity party and open your eyes to what God has in mind for you I believe that there's somebody who can testify it's as you have stayed in place these last eight weeks God has moved in some unusual ways God has developed some things for you God has brought some things to pass for you God has shown himself in some necessary ways you needed to see God in these last eight weeks the way that God has 
shown himself to you. Somebody can testify that once you stop pouting and settle down, you were able to see the underlying purposes and plan that God has for you, that God has for your marriage, that God has for your family, that God has for your career. You are seeing at another depth. You're hearing at a higher frequency. And while it may not have been your preference, you're thankful that it has been his purpose and his plan. Now you can understand what Paul really meant when Paul says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that is at work within us. I'm talking to somebody right now who can say, I've discovered that the writer of Proverbs is correct. We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. The Lord directs our steps. So why try to understand everything along the way? Can I help you right now? There are some things that aren't for you to understand because God is doing it beyond your comprehension. There are some things that are not for you to figure out because they are not. They are beyond your figuring out. They are in the mind of God, but they are the purposes and plans that God has for your life. God, stay in place orders. Reinforce our primary call to his person rather than to a place. And God assigns us to places based upon his purpose and not our preference. You know, there's one other thing about, about your preference. Your experience has already told you that your preference is faulty because uh, there, were, there were some chicken heads and knuckleheads that were your preference. And, and God said, that ain't my purpose. That is not my plan for your life. And where would you be if God had let you stay in your preference with chicken head and knucklehead? My God, how much different would your life be how much worse off would your life be if God had left you with your preference? I am so glad that God did not leave me with my preference, but that God had a plan and God had a purpose for my life that was so much more than what my preference was. Because here's the thing, friends, your preference is based upon your last tasting. And your last tasting was immature. Is there anybody here who can say, I'm so glad that God has given me a greater sophistication of my palate, my God, than I was before. I'm so glad that I am not still at spam and chicken of the sea level. I'm so glad that God has expanded my experiences because now what I really prefer is so much greater than what I did. But what I really want, I want what God has for me. I want what God sees for me. I want what God God has planned for my life. And so God assigns us according to his purpose and plan, not our preference. He calls us to himself first. But then there's, there's another thing. God calls us to pursue his purpose by doing what we know to do in anticipation of him doing what he promised to do. God calls us to pursue his purpose by doing what we know to do in anticipation of his doing what he promises to do. But Jesus having said to them, on no account are you to leave Jerusalem, y'all are to stay right here in Jerusalem. Verse 12 of Acts chapter 1 reads this way. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Verse 14 continues saying, they all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. Look now, they go back to the upper room in Jerusalem where they remain where they where they stay in place 
They stay in place and they commit themselves to unified prayer. They seek to discern a replacement for Judas. They do what they know to do in pursuit of God's purpose in anticipation of God doing what God promised to do. And the more that they did what they could do, the closer that they got to God doing what God promised to do. They, they did what they knew to do, not knowing when God would do what God promised to do. You see, Jesus did not give them a specific date. Jesus did not say, put this on the calendar. Jesus did not say, this is how long you're going to have to stay. Jesus did not say, this is how long you're going to have to wait. He just told them to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father, which would come their way not many days hence, but he does not give them a day. Look at this now. As they stay in place, as they do what they knew to do, they come into contact with what God had promised. Yes, yes, yes. As they do what they know to do, they come into contact with God doing what God promised. The, the book of Acts chapter 2 says, on the day of Pentecost, all of the believers were meeting together in one place. They're doing what they knew to do on the day of Pentecost. Jesus did not say it was going to happen on the day of Pentecost, but they're doing what they know to do on the day of Pentecost. And as they are doing what they know to do on the feast day of Pentecost, Luke says, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Cloven tongues of fire were upon their heads, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Do you see it right here? As they stayed in place doing what they knew to do, God suddenly did what God promised to do. Oh my God, I like, I like, I like just reading the Bible. As they were doing what they knew to do, God suddenly broke in. Friends, I'm just trying to get you to understand that as you stay in place doing what you know that you need to do, God can meet you in some surprise ways. Oh my God, God can bring us suddenly in your life when you're not looking for it. You're just obeying God, being faithful to your task, fulfilling your role, doing your thing. God can break through with a sudden activity. Somebody can testify that you had no idea that God would do what he did with you where you were. You had no idea. You had no clue that God was up to the kingdom move that God was up to. You had no inkling of the life change and the witness that God raised with you just doing what you were supposed to do right where you are. And to the person right now who is having to stay in place, not by the order of your state, but by the order of heaven itself, I encourage you right now, my friend, to do what you need to do where you are and anticipate God doing what God has promised. Keep working and watch God work. Keep serving and watch God provide. Keep witnessing and watch God draw. Keep praising and watch God prove himself. Keep sacrificing and watch God supply your need according to his riches in glory which are in Christ Jesus. Right where you are, I dare you to anticipate God doing what God promised that he he would do because that's what the disciples experience. That's what somebody can say I've experienced in my own life but it's not just the disciples and it's not just somebody in a contemporary experience but it was Jesus himself. When he went to Calvary my friend he stayed in place. He could have avoided the cross and when he was on the cross and they said if you be the son of God come down and save yourself he could have come down from the cross. He could have gotten 
gotten off in any time. He could have called 10,000 angels to fight on his behalf, take the nails out of his wrists and out of his feet and lift him off the cross. But somebody knows that he stayed in place right on Calvary. He did what he knew to do. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was chastened for our peace and he had stripes for our healing. He stayed right where he was and he suffered and he bled and he died. And as he stayed in place through the pain, as he stayed in place through the agony, as he stayed in place through the darkness, God did what God promised that God would do. God provided a savior. God reconciled us to himself. Do you see Jesus staying in place, anticipating God doing what God said that he would do? Do you see Jesus hanging between two thieves, between the sixth and the ninth hour, when he feels like the Father has forsaken him? And when he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he stays right there. Why does he stay? Because he stays in agony. But he has an anticipation. The Paul says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God before Jesus. As he stays right there is the anticipation of the joy of salvation, the joy of redemption, the joy of resurrection. He stayed in place. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. And then early Sunday morning God raised him from the dead. God fulfilled the promise to raise Jesus. And now he's highly exalted and has a name that's above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We can stand and proclaim that there's no greater name because God did what God promised he would do. And I don't know about you, but I'm persuaded that as long as the Lord wants me to be wherever he has me, I'm going to make up in my mind. I'm going to stay in place and do what I need to do because I'm anticipating the promises of God. I'm anticipating God keep his word. I'm anticipating God fulfilling his promise. I'm anticipating God carrying out his plan. I'm anticipating God completing his work. I'm knowing that he that has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody ought to tap your neighbor in your house and say, neighbor, since we're in place, let's just get everything that God has for us right where we are. Let's get all of the joy. Let's get all of the peace. Let's get all of the power. Let's get all of the comfort. Let's get all of the anointing. Let's get all that God has in mind for us until God does what God promised. I'm going to enjoy every other thing that God has in store for me because friend, while your mind is on one promise, God is fulfilling so many other things that you might not even know about, but he told himself, I'm going to drop this this way and I'm going to drop that that way. They aren't even looking at it because they're looking at one word but there are so many other words that I've spoken to myself that I'm going to bring their way. That's why somebody can testify. I wasn't looking for that one. I wasn't expecting that one because I had my eye on one thing but God has blessed me with more than what I was looking for. God has blessed me more than what I was counting on. God has blessed me more than what I was believing for. God has blessed me more than what I was praying for. God has blessed me beyond more than I was fasting for. God has blessed me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Right where you are, he's doing so much more than you've been looking for. 
<laughs> so much more than you've been trusting for. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard all of the things God has prepared. 